How many layers of authentication or authorization do you go through before approving purchases or acting on requests from coworkers? Hi, I'm Eddie Cardenas. I'm the controller here at All Connected. And as the controller, I'm very concerned about business email compromise and social engineering. Today, we're going to be talking about boosting security within your team by applying multi-factor authentication to communication between employees. We've already talked about the benefits of implementing MFA as a security policy throughout your organization. No one should be able to gain access to secure, sensitive applications or systems without going through multiple layers of ID verification. But securing logins across your team is only a portion of the security battle. What if the threat isn't a hacker trying to log in to a system where data can be compromised and instead the threat is something like spear phishing campaign against your accounting department directing that a large amount of money be transferred business email compromise is an enormous threat to organizations particularly in finance departments that's why it's important to include additional levels of id verification even when you're dealing with direct correspondence Many people wouldn't think twice about direct orders from, say, the CEO of the company. But what if it's not actually the CEO that you're talking to? Recently, there have been numerous examples of companies being scammed out of large financial sums through targeted social engineering. In one instance, a company lost more than $250,000 to a deep fake phone call replicating the sound of the CEO's voice authorizing a wire transfer. With this kind of advanced technology available to hackers, allowing them to fake the voices of their victims to gain additional access within an organization, it's important to keep your security policies up to date and consider all possible threats. Establish a policy that allows for MFA in your organization to account for human errors as well. For example, it may be beneficial to implement a policy that no wire transfer that exceeds a predetermined amount may be approved without a physical signature from the CEO. Specify when a digital signature is and is not appropriate and outline a procedure for reporting suspicious requests regardless of who initiates the request. For more information on how security policies factor into your organization's cybersecurity, visit allconnected.com and call, chat, or schedule an appointment with one of our experts.